The mute woman kept a monster in the bathroom. They looked at each other affectionately. The mute woman made a meaningful gesture, then slowly undressed. She blocked the door gap with a towel. She turned on the faucet. Let the water flow in the bathroom. The two began an indescribable story. Time ticked by. The water level gradually rose. The woman emerged from the water and took a deep breath, then embraced the water creature. Enjoyed this pleasure. But soon, the water in the bathroom flowed into the downstairs neighbor. The old painter's home. The painter was woken up and hurriedly went to the mute woman's home. He saw water spraying out through the bathroom door. He curiously opened the bathroom door. A large amount of water sprayed out from inside. The water monster was glowing blue. The mute woman and the creature were enjoying it all. Upon seeing this, the painter wisely closed the door. This unusual romance began a few months ago. The water monster originally lived in the Amazon basin, considered a god by the locals. Unfortunately, it was discovered by the U.S. military to counter enemy nations. The military captured it and took it to a research base to study its mysterious powers. The mute woman worked as a cleaner there. One day while cleaning, she was drawn to the strange creature. She approached the container holding the creature, but the creature was startled and became aggressive. <laughs> The project doctor immediately chased away intruders. The mute woman didn't think much of it, as there were many strange things there. The mute woman was born mute, with three natural scars on her neck. Her daily life was simple and regular. Her social circle was quite small. Zelda was the only friend who would interact with her. That day, the laboratory chief was suddenly bitten by the water monster. The mute woman and Zelda were ordered to clean the lab. Blood was everywhere on the ground, even severed fingers. The mute woman heard the creature's movements and approached its container out of curiosity. The creature had obvious wounds from the chief. As the mute woman tried to observe more closely, the lab doctor stopped them. The mute woman's curiosity kept her thinking about the creature. One day, during cleaning, she revisited the lab, but the water monster has been transferred to the pool. The mute woman took out a hard-boiled egg and gently tapped the shell. The sound of the egg's shell attracted the monster's attention. He slowly poked his head out, then slowly swam to the edge of the pool and slowly stood up. It's the first time she's ever seen a water monster in real life. A half-human, half-fish appearance, but the creature. Having just been hurt, still feared humans. The mute woman placed the egg by the pool and made a gesture. The creature took the egg and went underwater. From then on, the mute woman's relationship with the water monster grew closer. She often fed the water monster boiled eggs during her cleaning breaks. The creature even learned its sign language. The two established a kind of communication through music. The mute woman would sometimes dance in front of it. The water monster watched mesmerized. The two lonely souls seemed to have found each other. But they didn't know that the doctor nearby saw it all. He had thought the water monster lacked intelligence, but was surprised by its cleverness. The next day, when the mute woman returned to the laboratory, the water monster had already been chained up, covered him wounds. The mute woman looked at him with pity. At that moment, the mute woman suddenly heard the sound of someone entering. She quickly hid away. It was the officers who had been bitten by the water monster. To take revenge on the water monster, he grabbed an electric baton and repeatedly shocked the water monster, leaving it nearly dead. At that moment, the military commander arrived for an inspection, inquiring about the research progress on the water monster from the doctor. The doctor could only express helplessness admitting no scientific advancement. Unexpectedly, the commander ordered them to dissect the water monster to quickly discover its hidden technological value. The doctor wanted to refuse, but the commander's authority was too high. Count these stars with me, son. There are five of them. Means I can do whatever the hell I want. All of this was overheard by the mute woman hiding nearby. She couldn't bear to see the water monster's life being wasted like this, so she went home and found the painter neighbor downstairs, discussing whether they could rescue the water monster together. The painter thought it was too crazy, but after some persuasion from the mute woman, the painter agreed to help. As oh, under the cover of night, the mute woman quietly went to the laboratory base. She redirected the cameras to other angles, then went to where the water monster was imprisoned, trying to unlock the chain restraints. Just then, the doctor walked in. It turned out he had discovered the mute woman's plan long ago. With the doctor's help, they unlocked the water monster's restraints. Hiding it in a trash can, the doctor also gave her some specially made salt and taught her how to feed the water monster while transporting it outside. Her friend Zelda noticed something was wrong, but eventually decided to help the mute woman. Meanwhile, the painter drove a truck to the base's back door disguised his garbage collection, but the guard found the credentials were fake. He pulled out a gun and tried to force the painter to surrender. In a critical moment, the doctor used a bomb to destroy the power system, then quickly arrived at the back door and used a poison needle to deal with the guard. Afterward, they rendezvous with the mute woman, seeing the water monster shot the painter. Finally, they all transported the water monster into the truck and quickly fled the scene. By the time the commanding officers arrived, it was too late. The mute woman and the painter had already placed the water monster in the bathtub at home. Seeing the water monster on the brink of death, the mute woman kept sprinkling salt into the water until the water monster recovered its breath to ensure the water monster could survive. The mute woman decided to return it to the sea where it belonged, so she went to the dock to research the best time and place for release. Considering that the water level would rise from January to October, it was the best opportunity to release the water 
water monster. On the base's side, the commanding officers received severe criticism from his superiors for losing the water monster, but he soon discovered the bomb that caused the base's power outage. He boldly speculated it was the work of a professional team, possibly involving spies, so he began to investigate all personnel at the base one by one. The mute woman and Zelda, due to their humble status, were not suspected. The mute woman took special care of the water monster every day, even teaching it through pictures and words. The painter sometimes came to chat with it. But on this day, while the painter was asleep, the water monster left the bathtub. He looked at this strange world, both curious and frightened. At this moment, a kidnapping in the living room caught his attention. When the painter heard the noise and came over, he found the water monster eating the cat. Startled, the water monster ran out, accidentally scratching the painter's arm. Upon learning the situation, the mute woman hurried to chase the water monster. Eventually, she found it in an empty theater downstairs by following the blood stains on the road. The water monster felt deep remorse. Back at home, the water monster even apologized to the cat. The painter knew it was unintentional, so he did not blame it, but the remorseful water monster let the painter hold its head. Then its entire body glowed with blue light. The next day, when the painter was changing the bandage on his arm, he found that his wound, several centimeters long, had disappeared and even hair had grown back. It turned out the water monster had a strong healing ability. The mute woman comforted the water monster back to the bathtub. At the moment they made contact, the water monster's skin emitted a blue light, but its actions surprised the mute woman. Panicked, she fled the bathtub. She couldn't help but think she shouldn't be bound by societal norms. So the mute woman returned to the bathtub. She took off her coat. What happened next was clear. Afterward, the mute woman felt much happier, wearing red shoes to work and smiling. Her friend Zelda asked her what had happened. The mute woman gestured with indescribable hand movements. We do not understand what she meant. With the rainy season approaching, the water levels in the canal continued to rise. But before the release day arrived, the water monster started to weaken, coughing up large amounts of blood. Zelda hurriedly called the doctor for help, but the doctor was on the run at the time. It turned out he was a Soviet spy. His goal was to kill the water monster to prevent us military from gaining it. And when he discovered the humanity of the water monster, he betrayed everyone and chose to let the water monster go. The Soviet agents decided to silence him. Meanwhile, the base's commanding officers also discovered that the doctor was a Soviet spy. He had been tracking him all along after taking out a few agents. He pressed the doctor on the whereabouts of the water monster. At the end, the doctor left a profound message. No names, no ranks. They, they just clean. The commanding officers pondered for a moment. He remembered that to women, so he went to Zelda's house, forcing her to reveal the water monster's whereabouts. But no matter how the commanding officers threatened her, Zelda refused to speak. But her husband was a coward and immediately revealed that the water monster had been kidnapped by the mute woman. He even disclosed their plan to release it that night. The commanding officers rushed to the mute woman's house. The mute woman, realizing their plan had been exposed, and the painter quickly drove the water monster to the dock. The commanding officers followed based on the notes in the calendar. Just as the mute woman and the water monster were saying goodbye, the water monster was suddenly shot and fell to the ground. The mute woman was unsurprised. Seeing the plan about to fail, the painter suddenly attacked the commanding officers from behind. Just then, the water monster, washed by the rain, regained its strength and repaired its wounds with its powerful healing ability. And the commanding officer's fate was easily foreseeable. In the end, the water monster held the injured mute woman and dived into the water. He caressed the three natural scars on the mute woman's body, kissing her affectionately. At that moment, a miraculous scene occurred. The three scars on the mute woman's body actually evolved into gills, and she also acquired the ability to breathe underwater. That's how the two of them lived forever in the sea.